Greetings, world. We are anonymous. Far too many of us struggle in this cacophony of deceit that our corporate owned government institutions force upon us. We are indeed not free, but servile to financial institutions that have their webs cast upon every facet of civilization. The money those in power use to propagate your slavery is a mere illusion. They create your worth, your fiber of being and the majority of us are kept under heel. This needs to change. We feed their machines. We are their machines. They devour the fruits of our labor. We had an idea, and that idea has grown like a wildfire in the hearts and minds of humanity worldwide. They tried to kill that idea, but now we have grown stronger than ever. We are the antibiotic curing the disease of anti-humanitarian cancer. We do not preach from high up pedestals and tell the people what to do, because we are you. We must all work together collectively. People believe we do not have any answers or any solutions, but we the technical minded actually do. The majority of us believe in open source government backed by resource based economics on a planetary level. If a computer's operating system is malfunctioning it is replaced. We view governments as global operating systems, flawed full of bugs and crash reports. Hitting the off switch and rebooting simply. Anyone who uses social media might admit it can be hard to tear yourself away. Now the former head of Facebook says that's exactly what the founders intended. And like the site he helped create this morning, he has our attention. The 38-year-old mogul admits he, along with other pioneers of social media, knew what they were doing. We understood this consciously, and we did it anyway. Facebook estimates it's more than 2 billion users spend about 50 minutes per day on its apps, including Instagram and Messenger. It literally changes your relationship with society, with each other. While the medical community has yet to classify social media as addictive like alcohol or gambling, one recent study found that participants who appeared to use social media most compulsively showed changes in the part of the brain that controls right. impulse. The thought process that went into building these applications, Facebook being the first of them to really understand it, that thought process was all about how do we consume as much of your time and conscious attention as possible. And that means that we need to sort of give you a little dopamine hit every once in a while um, because someone liked or commented on a photo or a post or whatever. And that's going to get you to contribute more content. And that's going to get you, you know, more likes and comments. I mean, it's a, it's a, val it's a social validation feedback loop that, that it's like a, I mean, it's exactly the kind of thing that a, that a hacker like myself would come up with because you're exploiting a vulnerability in, in human psychology. And I just, I, th I think that we, you know, we, the inventors, creators, you know, and it's, it's me, it's Mark, it's the, you know, Kevin Systrom and Instagram, it's all of these people, um, understood this consciously and we did it anyway. If you don't think you're addicted, and I'm talking about anyone, from the highest to the lowest, if you don't think you're addicted, then see if you can turn it off for a week. It got quiet in here, didn't it? <laughs> didn't it get real quiet? It's a tool, so we should use it. God has blessed us with free will. Now it's free will magnified, free will on steroids. You're free to go in any direction you want. It will allow you, and it's not the enemy. It's just a, it's, it's just a reflection of our own free will. You know? and, and we all want to be liked, but now we want to be liked by 16 million. And will now some of us do anything to be liked? We, we used to do anything to be liked, but it was the, by the person in front of you. Now it's to be liked by 16 million people that you don't know. We have to ask ourselves, what is the long term if not too, the short we term effect? We have created tools that are ripping apart the social fabric of how society works. That is truly where we are. And I would encourage all of you as the future leaders of the world to really internalize how important this is. If you feed the beast, that beast will destroy you. If you push back on it, we have a chance to control it and rein it in. And it is a point in time where people need to hard break from some of these tools and the things that you rely on. 
the short-term dopamine-driven feedback loops that we have created are destroying how society works. No civil discourse, no cooperation, misinformation, mistruth. And it's not an American problem. This is not about Russian ads. This is a global Today we problem. live in a world now where it is easy to confuse truth and popularity. And you can use money to amplify whatever you believe and get people to believe that what is popular is now truthful and what is not popular may not be truthful. And the reality is now I can take money and I can use that through all of these social media systems that exist to hundreds of millions of people and I can convince all of Joe's friends and everybody like him of my opinion in very subtle and small ways. And he can do the same to me. We can do that about vaccines. We can do that about gay rights. We can do that about bathroom laws. We can do that about Roy Moore. And so I think the question we have to ask ourselves is how do we live in a world where this what is now possible? all of these systems do, every single one, is it exploits our own natural tendencies in human beings to get and want feedback. And that feedback, chemically speaking, is the release of dopamine in your brain. And so what these feedback loops do, and they exist everywhere, in Call of Duty, in other video games, in social networking sites, they get you to react. And I think that if you get too desensitized and you need it over and over and over again, then you become actually detached from the world in which you live. You become callous, you become crude. And you live in front of your screen.